Hey guys, my name is Hap and this is the Rhine Metal Bulls Equiffen Trigger. That's quite a mouthful, ain't it? Let's just call it the Bullsick or the Boomsick for the sake of brevity. Sorry for the fact that I don't have any garage footage in here, I'm in quite a rush. I hope you're all having a good corona holiday so far and I hope you didn't catch the bugger yet. So far I'm doing okay and I somewhat recovered from the constant kicking that my real life gives to me. So without further ado, let's start this review. The gun is... odd for a German TD. Yes, it packs quite a punch for quite the reload, but something isn't right about it. Yes, it is in fact the accuracy of the gun itself. It isn't good, let's say. It's around 0.4, and with a refined gun you can get that to 0.38, but you really ought to at least use the vertical stabilizer, as the aim time on the gun isn't all that great either. It is also limited by its 5 degrees of gun depression and not so great penetration on its AP rounds. Well. Why do people run it instead of the 128mm then? First, if you want to run a 460 Alpha tank, there are many others to choose from. The new Hori Type 1, Yacht Panther 2, Scorpion G, and the WZ111 1GFT are the only ones that are coming to my mind at the moment. Second, the memes. You haven't played the Borsig until you nuked the light tank for 900, or smacked the heavy for 700 and then lit it on fire. And if the thing you're trying to hit has too much armor, just load the heat. It's ridiculously high penetration basically ensures you're gonna pen no matter what. So how to play with a gun like this? Well, you should really learn to maximize all of your shots. That means picking the correct ammo type, aiming for engine decks and such, and always appearing during opportune times. The rest will come to you the more you play it, trust me. And the armor section is gonna be short. Why? Well, this thing has no armor to speak of, really. Most tanks will be able to bend the entire thing with high explosive or at least the gun shield. You got 1100 hit points, so it's not too bad, but you should really avoid getting hit. Also, if you're firing at this thing from the side, take care of the high explosive. I'd rather fire at the gun shield to prevent the tracks from absorbing most of the punishment. Really, your best friend in this tank is your camouflage as it's pretty damn high. Just take advantage of that and you'll stay alive for much longer than expected. Demobility, hmm. This is kind of a hard topic on the Borsig. Let's just say that it's sufficient. It's not great or anything, but you're faster than most heavies, that's what I'm trying to say. It's definitely better than the Störe ML before this, but it isn't that much better. The Waffle Tractor a tier later and the Grill fixed is not to worry. So how do I run the Boomsig? Well, for starters, a gun rammer. That can be taken for granted with a lot of tanks, however, calibrated shells are also viable. Yeah, you will lose a big chunk of time when reloading, but you'll have ludicrously high heat pen, and your HE will be pretty viable too. Next, improved modules, since you're weak AF, and of course the camo net. I then run the supercharge, but that's only my personal preference, as the shell velocity is terrible. The supercharge fixes that slightly, but not by a whole lot, so I recommend taking the gun lane drive instead. Then improved assembly as you're not gonna be bouncing anything anyway, and the engine accelerator as your traverse is already fine as it is. I then run the vertical stabilizer, or maybe it is the refined gun? Mm, I don't actually remember, but it doesn't make a whole lot of a difference. Then the toolbox and the consumable delivery system as you won't be shooting very often. For replays I only have one this time. I know, but I wanna see if people prefer longer reviews or shorter reviews. This is a replay I had in my folder for quite some time and I remember it being a very accurate representation of how to, how to play the Borsig, so let's have a look then, shall we? Right, so tanker underscore WN underscore 1, possibly from Vietnam, will show us how it's done in the Borsig. And one of the main things about the Borsig that you should know is that a lot of people camp in it. Now, that is perfectly reasonable, actually. Since the Borsig has really no armor, it kind of depends 
on distance to just kind of, well, let's say, stay alive. The camo also really helps it in this department, but what I would tell you to orient yourself about would be to just, let's say, orient yourself around long to mid-range. I wouldn't go close range with this tank as it makes it way too easy to get absolutely destroyed in it. Long range or mid range are your best friend in this tank, trust me. You really don't want to be brawling against the light tank in this thing. <laughs> and for a while we can see that the tanker will be having problems with the gun, as already seen with this first shot against the T-54. Or whatever the hell that was, because Sony Vegas decided to put my preview size at so low that I can't actually see what he's shooting at properly. But I'm assuming that that is a T-54. Now, here, come another, here comes another tank. Possibly an Ice 5 from what I can tell. And it really shows with the balls in here that... Oh, look about. <laughs> He, he's gonna really have some bad luck at the start of this battle, but what can you do about that? N not much, actually. So, like, that part really just shows just how little penetration the Bolsig really has on its AP rounds. You have to resort to using either Heat or firing HE quite a lot, so with these long distance shots, if you can't pen it, either just load the Heat or load the HE, don't wait. It's not worth waiting if, you're, if the shot is just gonna run away and you're never gonna see it again. It's not exactly ideal, let's say. Oh look, that's a Bolsig. Yikes! <laughs> See what I mean with the memes? This really big alpha helps so much with clearing tank destroyers, you wouldn't believe it. And personally, I, I think that's a pretty good thing. Nice that that went through, let's be real. Now, he is finally gonna start to move up a bit after this segment, mainly because he needs to have better shots at the enemy tanks that he's actually aiming at. Wow, another penetration, this time sure with heat, so it is kind of granted, but let's be real, at that kind of a distance it was still far too likely that he could have just hit the turret instead. Hmm. Uh, yes, uh, that, that's a really nasty shot. Ooh. So we're already at plenty of damage, and it's 2 versus 5, not exactly ideal numbers, so let's take that down a notch, shall we? Wow, we. Okay, so this is 2v4 now. Now, Tanker has the advantage here that he still has all of his hit points left. That makes him able to do some sort of a fair trade, let's say, especially against the T49. But he doesn't need to trade HP as he has already gotten him. Wonderful. And now it's only him against three tanks, so this makes it a chance to get a club off. And uh, I would say that that's entirely likely. As long as he spots them, that is. Which is gonna be a bit troubling, even though he has that skill that, you know, just gives you extra view range if you're the only guy left on your team. It doesn't help too much with a tank like the Borsig. It's not exactly known for spotting things, so let's be real. Now, in the current climate of tier 8, and all of these crates and such, is the Borsig still a viable tank to keep, play for a few hundred battles and then maybe have some more fun with it a few years down the line? I would say so. It is pretty good, but let's be real, if you want an even better 150mm gun, you can get the ISU-152. And I won't be... I won't be blaming him for anything. The ISU-152 just has an absolutely glorious 150mm gun. Let's be real. Now, I am also struggling with the waffle right after this. I know that's crazy, but I legit cannot handle the top 150mm gun. I have to use the 128 to kind of get used to it, so we'll see what I'll put up on the polls on my Discord server on what would you want to see next. Although I have some footage for tanks already that I would kind of want to review, so I'll take a look over those, and a few days later I'll post a quick poll on my announcements if you want this tank or this tank or this tank reviewed. 
as always. Now, as we can see, Tanker is taking a pretty smart spot in a bush with a camo net that makes him really, really hard to spot. Now, if he positioned himself behind the bush, that would be a bit better, but he kind of needs to kill the, team, the IS-8, which he did, and he spotted in exchange. So, of course, the first thing that he does is to run, and that's... That's really a smart thing in this thing, you really don't know just how much damage the enemy will deal to you. And let's just say that this is so far a very nice and exciting battle. It just kind of shows how you play the Borsic. First off you start at like uh, far, far, far distances in the map and then you just start closing in if you got enough HP and if there's enough targets. If there aren't any visible targets for some time, just, oh yikes, just don't, just don't stay there, just try to relocate, that's kind of what you should do. Ah yes, and the final enemy, the Lerva, at least I think it's a Lerva, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing this quite well. <laughs> Ooh, well that was a miss, and that is Tanker's game. A pretty, pretty good game. A Kolobanov, from what I can tell, a Rattling Walters, and plenty, plenty of damage. And that's what the Bolsic does the best, dealing the damage. 5,000. And guess what? It's not a Radley, it's a Pools. <laughs> My name is Hab. If you somehow like this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And also tell me if you prefer these shorter reviews or longer reviews in the comments. That is gonna be it. And I guess I can say bye bye.